All right, hey folks. So uh, I had a bit of a request to um, take a look into how to map out um, key changes in AutoTune using Live Professor. And uh, apologies for the delay at the holiday, and then uh, I got pretty sick and then got into some production stuff. So just having a minute to, to kind of follow up with this. Um, but you can see I've got um, some global snapshots here. I want to talk about actually a couple of different things in AutoTune. Um, right now I'm running AutoTune Live. I have AutoTune Pro in here. I bought it, um, but you can see that by default it's got a latency of 55 milliseconds, which is problematic. And the only real way around that right now is that you have to come in here to settings and um, force it to go into low latency mode. And it doesn't seem to be happy with um, doing any kind of change. So if you reopen the program or it crashes and you have to reopen, um, you can see that um, I got down to 2.1 milliseconds, which is okay. Um, if you've got a you know fast enough driver in whatever your audio interface is, but uh, uh, what will happen is that'll if I switch any kind of uh, key change or anything like that uh, using a snapshot, that'll just flip right back to 55 milliseconds. So. I got a work uh, on wor a workaround for that, but currently it's it makes it unusable for live. So I'm still on the previous version of AutoTune Live, and most of the time you can kind of park this in chromatic. Um, I like to put my retune speed fairly slow. Uh, my goal usually when using AutoTune is is that I want it to be you know fairly imperceptible. Um, we don't really want people to hear that it's happening, uh, unless you do, unless it's that kind of show. But generally, the shows that I run, I want this to be sort of a subtle glue that, that helps the band kind of come together as opposed to a, an overt effect. Um, so we can kind of control this in one of a couple of different ways. And um, you can see I've got some global snapshots here. And it really, it's pretty straightforward. When you create a new global snapshot um, for something, um, you can just come down here and hit this plus sign. And actually, I'll delete this one. That was on earlier, because we're going to make a new one. So really, all you have to do is come in here and do a thing. So uh, we're going to do something weird, like put this in A flat, and um, I don't know, Pythagoras. Um, that won't be at all weird. And in fact, we're going to make this really fast. Um, so that will be extra weird. Um, and then I'm going to come down here, I'm going to hit plus, and I'm going to call this a thing I want to happen to auto-tune. And you can see I've got a bunch of red dots here, and that is going to be whatever your default filter is. Now, I'm going to put this back to chromatic because this could drive me nuts. Um, Live Professor to by default has a certain set of parameters that it will say, I want these things to recall. Um, you'll see this in this global snapshot. So you see I've got a bunch of things that are green in here, only a few things that are that are kind of uh, in red. That was my original default uh, snapshot filter. Um, I've updated now. Um, you can, let's see, where is it here? Um, and then settings, this is a really cool feature. You can, once you create a filter that you like, you can have Live Professor just default um, to using that as the default filter when you create a new global snapshot. Mostly I just do auto-tune pitch changes, so that, that made the most sense for me to have my filter look something like this. So um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come in here to your filter selection, and we're going to say all, because that's going to turn everything red. That's going to make nothing recalled in this this particular snapshot and then we want to come in here to plugin settings we want to make sure that's active and we want to make sure auto tune is active um, and actually i'm going to throw pro in there as well just so i can show you that weirdness that was happening there um don't need plugin order to change don't need any game changes in this don't need controller maps or workspaces. Plugin chunks, I forget what this does, but I don't actually need this for the key change, so I'm just going to leave it alone. Um, and so now you'll see that when I go thing I want to happen, 
check it out, put it on up to 55 milliseconds. Stupid. Um, and now we're back in this weird Pythagoras thing. And you can see my retune speed changed. And I can kind of go through my list of things that I've created. I found um, it really helpful to, um, I just made a bunch of snapshots for all the major keys. Um, in another show, I have major and minor, um, as well as a couple of you know other things that are um, occasionally used. But typically, you're just going to be mostly in you know major and minor keys, unless you're in a more interesting band than the, the stuff that I work with. Um, and then it's r really as simple as I'm going to make, I don't know, song one, build my life, going to be in G major. Um, what I want to want to do here is I'm going to go in here and for this G major thing, all I really did was let me see where did I go? Yeah, there we go. There's G major. So that snapshot. All I really did was I came in here, I opened up Auto Tune, I made sure this one was in G major. I made sure this one was in G major. I made sure this one was in G major. I made sure this one was in G major. I'm just going to come over here and right click and I'm going to say update snapshot. Now, if I came in here and turned you to, I don't know, C major for some reason and hit update snapshot. Now, when I recall that snapshot, this one is going to be in C major for some reason. So let's fix that. So those are global snapshots. That's one way to control auto-tune. Um, I found that with X32, I know some of you are using X32, um, things are a little bit backwards. Um, now with, with my DLive console, um, I just use the Allen and Heath DCP MIDI protocol, and that just is a MIDI over uh, network connection that automatically shows up as a, as a MIDI device on the computer when it starts up it automatically connects um, and then what I'll do is I'll have um, you can see in here this MIDI section uh, learn and edit um, you can create all kinds of custom MIDI messages from controllers that will just automatically recall these things so when I recall a snapshot on the DLive for instance I have a panic button that sends out that MIDI message um, and then that MIDI message for that one, for that particular song, etc. So when I recall a snapshot, my professor just responds. With X32, um, oh, I have the X32. Okay, here we go. So with X32, um, and I'm not really going to be able to show you much of this, but um, you get cues, you get scenes, you get snippets. And the only way to send MIDI out on a cue or a, a thing recall, oops, sorry, let's just back that up, is uh, by using cues. If you use a cue, and it's not going to show me because I'm not connected to my console currently, but if you use a cue, you can re um, when you're connected to console, you'll see this other section here where you'll have MIDI. Um, and then I can send out of the console um, MIDI into Live Professor if I can connect it somehow. Uh, I was using my X-Touch as the MIDI interface uh, to send MIDI out of the X32 into the uh, into the Live Professor. Um, that was just the simplest solution for me. The issue that I have with that is that um, I found that using cues on the X32 was really a pain in the butt. Um, you kind of have to go and through here and index all of your cues properly and then even after you do that for whatever reason sometimes x32 likes to just say it just delete your cues or move them around or just decide that they're not there for some reason um, I think it's some kind of bug in the software and I haven't really be able to been able to iron that out so I've abandoned ship on using cues um, and use exclusively snippets for things which is sort of a problem because I can recall any kind of internal preset that I want on the console, but it won't send MIDI out when I do that. Um, uh, and so Live Professor won't respond to that. And so my workaround was to have Live Professor control X32. And the way that I did this was to use cue lists. Um, and I found this to be particularly um, useful, actually. 
So what I did is I created sort of these cue lists, and each one has a global snapshot recall for live professor, and then a MIDI uh, data recall. And that MIDI is sending MIDI out of live professor into a program called Oscillator, which is fantastic if you're on a Mac. I highly recommend looking at Oscillator for all kinds of show control stuff. Um, and you can see what happens is that I'm going to receive a MIDI message. So I've got uh, CC80 on channel 15 and then various values. And when that happens, it spits out a MIDI message with a particular argument um, to the target. And in this case, so the target is number four, and that's going to be this guy here. And you can see that there's the IP address of my console. And then this last little section is the port number. So any x32 console will respond to uh, commands sent on this port. You just have to know your IP address, and then you make sure that you're sending the port 10023. And so I'm sending out forward slash action go snippet. Um, there's some just a couple of custom ones. Um, I had to kind of play around with the scale. So if you hit this little guy, you can kind of see this. So whenever this thing is received, I'm sending out this value as an integer. Um, and really what all that means is that um, here's the actual message. So if I come here to Live Professor, let's do this one, for instance. Uh, um, and you can see that I received this MIDI message. It's telling me that it's MIDI CC80 with value of 2 on channel 15. And then its response, its output response, is that it sent out this OSC message uh, forward slash, I think that's a dash, uh, action forward slash go snippet, a space, a comma, an I, noting that this is an integer value, and then the value of 3. And then the corresponding response on the x32 would be that it should theoretically go, so living with cloud, that's going to be, um, and it's MIDI, so that'll be Q123, yeah, because zero is actually one. So then the X32 would have recalled this, this snippet when I hit the key in Live Professor. Neat thing about that is then you can map whatever you want out to uh, Control B's uh, MIDI device, whatever. Um, and then you just use Live Professor sort of as your, your grandmaster for your cues. Um, and that's kind of it. Um, pretty much, you either use a global snapshot or a, a cue list. There's a bunch of other different types of cues that I haven't really gotten into too much. I'm excited to kind of get into this, some of this controller stuff. Um, I like to be able to spit out OSC messages as a cue, but I don't, I don't think I can do that currently. Um, without having a controller set up as a, as an actual controller. I haven't had time to really mess with that too much. So uh, I hope this has been helpful and not you know too rambly. Um, and uh, do let me know if you have additional questions or things that you'd like me to explore.